Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Sabbath message. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm Pastor Rufus, and I have here with me Sister Joanna. And Sister Joanna will be blessing us with a reading from her commentary to prepare our hearts for the message today. But before we go to that, let's go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this uh, Sabbath day that you've given us, this blessed day. And we just pray that you'll just be with us and, and just uh, give our hearts rest in you, Lord, and, and just be with us in this message, anoint this message, and just uh, cause it to be the message that those who are listening uh is needs for their hearts, for their own personal hearts, Lord. And, and just bless the words that come out of my mouth and just help me to render the message as the message that you desire to communicate uh, to all who are listening, Lord. And, and we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for all these wonderful things that you're doing for us. Please uh, uh, bless Sister Joanna with her reading. And, and, and everything that she, her part in this uh, presentation today, Lord. And we thank you for all of this. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Um, this devotional of mine um, is very special. It's called Jesus Calling. You've probably all heard of it. But um, today's uh, reading, it really, it really linked in with um, this message, and I wanted to share it. And Jesus is speaking, this is in first person, Jesus speaking to us through the words of um, the author. I am with you always. I spoke these words to my disciples after my resurrection. I continue to proclaim this promise to all who will listen. People respond to my continual presence in various ways. Most Christians accept this teaching as truth, but ignore it in their daily living. Some ill-taught or wounded believers fear and maybe even resent my awareness of all they do, say, and think. A few people center their lives around this glorious promise and find themselves blessed beyond all expectations. When my presence is the focal point of your consciousness, all the pieces of your life fall into place. As you gaze at me through the eyes of your heart, you can see the world around you from my perspective. The fact that I am with you makes every moment of your life meaningful. Matthew 28, 20, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Psalm 139, 3 and 4. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Joanna. And now for our good news message today, entitled God's Word in His Son. Okay, and we'll begin with the introduction. Today's Sabbath message unleashes the surpassing greatness of God's Word as spoken in His Son. Though the prophets proclaim the greatness of God through many gracious and miraculous acts, the Son manifested the epitome of all that was found within those acts. He was with God from the beginning, even while laying the foundation of the earth. And from our previous message, uh, Titus 3, verses uh, 3 through 7. For we too were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. 
But when the kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind, I'm sorry, mankind, excuse me, appeared, he saved us, not on the basis of deeds, which we did in righteousness, but in accordance with his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of, by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured upon us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Hebrews, God's final word in his son. Hebrews chapter 1, 1 through 14. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also made the world. And he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Having become so much better than the angels, to the extent that he has inherited a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, today I have fathered you. And again, I will be a father to him and he will be a son to me. And when he began, brings the firstborn, excuse me, and when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God worship him. And regarding the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But regarding the sun, he says, your throne, God, is forever and ever. And the scepter of righteousness is the scepter of his kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of joy above your companions. And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain, and they all will wear out like a garment, and like a robe you will roll them up like a garment. They will also be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not come to an end. But to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to provide service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? Amen. Thank you, Sister Joanna. And <clears throat> excuse me. And now some further comments uh, from what we read above. And we entitled this, God Speaks in His Son. And so we previously learned about God by his words to the prophets and the fathers. But now he speaks to us in his son. It was the son who took away our sins and now sits at the right hand of the father. The father appointed him heir over all things. The son is an exact representation of his nature. He calls for all angels to worship him. His throne is a scepter of righteousness. Give heed, Hebrews 2, 1 through 18. For this reason, we must pay closer attention to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away from it. For if the word spoken through angels proved unalterable, and every violation and act of disobedience received a just punishment, how will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? After it was at first spoken through the Lord, it was confirmed to us by those who heard. God also testifying with them, both by signs and wonders, 
and by various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. For he did not subject to angels the world to come about which we are speaking, but someone has testified somewhere saying, what is man that you think of him or a son of man that you are concerned about him? You have made him for a little while lower than angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. You have put everything in subjection under his feet. For in subjecting all things to him, he left nothing that is not subject to him. But now we do not yet see all things subjected to him. But we do see him who was made for a little while lower than the angels, namely Jesus. <laughs> Excuse me. Because of his suffering death crowned with glory and honor, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things and through whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to perfect the originator of their salvation through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified are all from one father. For this reason, he is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I am the children whom God has given me. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, and that is the devil, and free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all of their lives. For clearly he does not give help to angels, but he gives help to the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brothers so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, note how in the reading above, the the uh, God made Jesus or created in Jesus uh, that he may participate in the flesh. He partook in our beingness that he may be able to save us, that he may learn from his from from his trials how to save us and 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 uh know what we knew what it was like to be in the flesh so that he may take us away from from the wiles of the devil and uh so let's let's read father the comments here uh in front of you if words spoken through angels were recompensed for transgressions or disobedience how can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation as offered by the Lord? God has put all things on his feet, appointing him over the works of his hands. He also partook in flesh that through death he might render powerless him who had power in death, that is, the devil. Jesus, our high priest. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 19. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus. Thank the Lord for Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He was faithful to him who appointed him, as Moses also was in all his house. For he has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, 
by just so much as the builder of the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken later. But Christ was faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are. If we hold firmly to our confidence and the boast of our hope, therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me, as on the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with this generation and said, they always go astray in their heart and they did not know my ways. As I swore in my anger, they certainly shall not enter my rest. Take care, brothers and sisters, that there will not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God but encourage one another every day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we keep the beginning of our commitment firm until the end. While it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me. For who provoked him when they had heard? Indeed, did not all those who came out of Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he angry for, for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose dead bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? And so we see that they were not able to enter because of unbelief. Amen. And note the strong emphasis on unbelief. And the, the passage brings out the fact that the, the ancient Israelites heard the word of God. They heard the word. Moses gave them the word. They had, they had his word. But it was their unbelief that kept them from entering his rest. It was their unbelief that caused uh, many of them to fall in the wilderness. It was their unbelief, brothers and sisters, that kept them away from God. And, and, and that, is, that is a strong emphasis in this passage and in the words that we've read so far to this point. And so now, uh, <clears throat> can more further comments on what we've Previously read, consider Jesus our high priest. And it reads, you who are partakers of a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the high priest of our confession. He was faithful to God who appointed him as Moses was in his house. However, Jesus is worthy of more glory than Moses as the builder of a house has more honor than the house. Christ was faithful as a son in a house wherein Moses was only a servant. <laughs> the believer's rest. Hebrews 4, 1 through 16. Therefore, we must fear if, while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you may seem to have come short of it. For indeed, we have had good news preached to us, just as they also did. But the word they heard did not benefit them because they were not united with those who listened with faith. For we who have believed enter that rest, just as he has said, as I swore in my anger, they certainly shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has said somewhere concerning the seventh day, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this passage, they certainly shall not enter my rest. 
Therefore, since it remains for some to enter it, and those who previously had good news preached to them failed to enter because of disobedience, he again sets a certain day, today, saying through David, after so long a time, just as has been said before, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. Consequently, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his works, as God did from his. Therefore, let's make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall by following the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, even penetrating as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him to whom we must answer. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let's hold firmly to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things just as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let's approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help at the time of our need. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, jo Sister Joanna. And note once again in the words that were just presented, the strong emphasis on belief, on faith, and God's word. Two things are required, to hear God's words and to believe it, to have faith, to believe. It was those among the Israelites who were disobedient who, do not, who did not enter his rest. They fell in the wilderness because they did not believe. And, and the many who, who were made it to the land with Joshua, they did not survive because of unbelief. And note how it emphasizes how perfect the word was. It's living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. This is as far as the division of soul and marrow, both joints and marrow, and, and is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And so God's word has the power. It has the power to bless us. It has the power to give us everything that we need. And, and the small requirement is up to us to believe, to have faith, to have faith in God's word. And thereby we enter his rest. Entering God's rest. The scripture warns that <clears throat> Though a promise remains for entering God's rest, many would seem to have come short of it. Though we have had the good news preached to us, many who heard did not benefit because it was not united with faith. The word of God is living and judges the intent of the heart. None among us is hidden from its sight. Amen. The perfect high priest... Hebrews 5, 1 through 14. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed on behalf of people in things pertaining to God in order to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and misguided since he himself also is clothed in weakness. And because of it, he is obligated to offer sacrifices for sins for himself as well as for the people. 
and no one takes the honor for himself, but receives it when he is called by God, just as Aaron also was. So too Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son, today I have fathered you. Just as he also says in another passage, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his humanity, he offered up both prayers and pleas with loud crying and tears to the one able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his devout behavior. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obey him, being designated by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Concerning him, we have much to say, and it is difficult to explain since you have become poor listeners. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the actual words of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unacquainted with the word of righteousness, for he is an infant, but solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to distinguish between good and evil. Amen. Amen. High priest for things of God. High priests for men are appointed to things, are appointed in things pertaining to God. He offers sacrifices for the people's sins and for himself. They receive his honor. They received this honor only when appointed by God. Nor did Christ glorify himself, but he who said, Today I have begotten thee, and thou art a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. Having been made perfect, he became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation. Amen. Amen. And that brings us to the conclusions. And uh, we'll begin with a passage from Jeremiah, uh, chapter 6, verse 16. Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Psalm 45, verse 3. Strap your sword at your side, O mighty warrior. Appear in your majesty and splendor. Psalm 149, 6. May the high praises of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands. And Isaiah 49, 2. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. He hid me in the shadow of his hand. He made me like a polished arrow. He hid me in his quiver. Amen. Amen. And amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful word today that you've given to us. And we just thank you for this day, your day, Lord, this Sabbath day, a day of rest for you. And Lord, we thank you that the subject of this word was the very thing we aspire to do on this day. That is to rest in you, Lord, and we, we just thank you for that. That is an amazing message to present, and it is because of you that we're able to do this. I thank you for Sister Joanna here who 
plays such an important role in this presentation and that you will, you will, I pray that you'll just continue to be with her and just lift her and bless her with all the things that you have for her. Um, instill in her heart your great love, Lord, and cause her to continue her work of love among those around us. And Lord, just keep me, keep me as well, Lord, and, and just protect both of us, Lord. And, and we just pray and we ask all these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, whom we give along with you, all the honor, all the praises and all the glory. Amen. Amen.